Isa, Isaac, Isaac Clark, 19. Have either of you ever been seriously offered slash tempted to take steroids? Is that good? You happy with that? Yeah, 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 yeah. Scale of one to ten. How sweaty am I now? <laughs> Seven, six and a half. It's only gonna get worse. <laughs> a sweat patch. Yeah, I just thought that grey. Thank you, Tom. By the next one, it's gonna be terrible. I'll be like, hi guys, welcome. <laughs> That's be so awkward. Hello, and welcome to another video. And um, hi. Hey, Mike. My name's Mike. Mike Thurston. Is Mike it? Thurston. Yes, it is. Is it though? Can you prove? Can we see a birth certificate? <laughs> because I just want me. I'm always quite suspicious of people's names. Um, so, in case you're unaware of who Mike is, basically, if you like my channel, but you've often thought like, I wish you were just slightly not as good looking and like maybe a bit smaller, and not <laughs> as gifted with your physique, Mike is going to be right up no, your street. You've given me a few shout outs in your channel already. Yeah. To be fair, he's a, like, I'll say if you don't, he is an absolute monster. He's one of those guys that like, a lot of people when you see on social media, you're disappointed when you see him in real life because they don't look as good. He looks as good. But it, I think he probably looks better in real life than he does on, on um, social media, which is quite a, it's quite a compliment, I'd say. So I'll put the link to Mike's uh, YouTube and Instagram in the description. So if you want to go and check him out, then go and check him out. No pressure, but if you don't do it, there's a balcony there and I'm jumping straight off it. So <laughs> bear that in mind. Um, okay, it's a Q&A, as you probably ascertained from the name, unless you can't read, in which case YouTube may not be the forum, although I guess it is actually, isn't it? Because you can watch it, that's the beauty of it. Yeah, or you can listen to it, you can just press play and go do something whilst you're listening. No, I disagree. Watch it. Okay, just watch it. I'm so going to be so sweaty. Um, so, I put it's a post. About, it's about definitely 30 degrees today in London. 30 degrees? Definitely 30 degrees. I don't no, think it is. I think it's like, yeah, mid 20s, but it's still for me, it's very hot. Um, I put a post on Instagram on Monday. Yeah, on Monday, uh, asking for questions. Had loads of questions because you guys are sick. Uh, if you're unaware of this event, then that means you probably aren't following my Instagram. If you're not following my Instagram, then what are you doing with your life? Go and do it now. Didn't you say earlier it was the best Instagram account you've seen ever? Yours? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. said, and I quote, best it's captions. Better than mine. Yeah. Much better than mine. <laughs> so if that isn't, if that hasn't swung it for you, then I don't know what else I can say. Um, so the drill is going to be as follows. I'm going to set an alarm, a timer, for 15 minutes because I feel like any more than 15 minutes is quite a long time for a Q&A, right? Yeah. Maybe, like, Mike has questions. the guy did one an hour yeah. long <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I feel like there are some people that would watch that, but like as a general yeah, audience, yeah, yeah. I don't want to be restrictive, you know? So I'm going to set a 15 minute timer. When the timer's up, the timer's up, guys. So if you don't like it, unlucky, you're here now. Okay, 15 minutes, we set. Three, two, one. Time is going. <clears throat> OMG, right, I'm going to go first. First question. <clears throat> Alex underscore Keir. Cool. And then three emojis like this. Alex, I feel like you failed to grasp the concept of a question. Um, notably, the question element of that. That's just a statement, <laughs> and it's not even a good statement. What are you doing with your life? <laughs> I suggest you just delete all of your social media accounts and go and find something else to do with your time. Yep, okay, so my question now. What are the three single most effective things you can do to improve your body composition? Whoa. <laughs> three, most, three, three things for body composition. Which is gonna have the biggest effect. Freaking hell, okay. Number one is going to be uh, like training. Like if you, in a, in, a, in a weightlifting sense, ultimately if you train for hypertrophy and you build loads of muscle, not only is that gonna make you look better because you have loads of muscle, it's also gonna have like benefits in terms of your metabolism, therefore it's gonna be easier to uh, carry like lower levels of body fat. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's just everyone's a winner. That's one thing. That's one. <laughs> I would that's say, one. I would say the three things that's going to help the most. I've already given you one, mate. Yeah, no, but I'm going to give you my three. Okay. That would be to get more sleep. I think that's the case for most people. Most people are deprived of sleep. If you can get seven to eight hours, you're winning. Okay. Get more cut sleep. out, I think possibly, especially if you're cutting, cutting out sugars and artificial sweeteners. Because yeah. if you're trying to diet, yeah, yeah, eating yeah, things yeah. like that, it's just going to be a nightmare. Yeah, it'll make it way easier to adhere to your diet if you're not eating that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, what's the third thing? I had a third thing. thing and it's gone from my head. Yeah, yeah. Good, Good, yes. Okay, next point, next question. Uh, Alex Jugaru, Jugaru Fitness. If you had to say something, what is the number one thing that has helped you gain your physiques? The number one thing? One, number one, top of the list, mate. It's consistency. Yes. Yeah, that's a vague answer, but yeah, but I agree. It is, it's like... Yeah, it's true, that's true. Yeah. You can't, I, I, I'm trying to think like the longest period of time I've had off from doing weights. And I can't, I don't think it's been longer than a week. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. And I've been doing it for 10 yeah, years. It's true. Like a lot of people will, will have a sick setup, but then just get bored or get impatient and sack it off and go and do something else. Like people in like this day and age want things to be immediate, which is un understandable, but like if you, a lot of the time, if you just persevere, then you'll get like decent results. Yeah, you've got to enjoy it as well, because you know, that's one of the most important things as well. Uh, that's true as well. And I think yeah. if, if I don't train for a while, I just feel weird. Yeah. I don't like it. I yeah. feel agitated. That's the point you want to That's the point you want to get to, right? You want to get yeah. to the point where like, you, you do it so much that it is like part of your routine. If you don't do it, you feel rubbish. Yeah, that's good. That's what you, it shouldn't be something you have to force yourself to do. It should be something that you just do. And if you don't do it, you feel crap. Yeah. Yeah. My question, by the way, I don't have the names for these people. So I'm sorry. I'm just cold like that. He's a horrible, horrible <laughs> person. He said at the start, I've got the name. Should I use them or not? And I was like, definitely use them. Give them some acknowledgement. He was like, no. And his, <laughs> exact, didn't go down his exact like that. words were, I hate everyone. <laughs> I hate humans. And I wish I was a cat. So that's quite yeah. weird. So he started licking his scrotum, carry on. <laughs> What's the ideal rep range to maximize muscle mass? Whoa. Um, okay, this is a, a bit of a gray area and it's very subjective. Like, obviously within reason, you know, if you're doing like 70 rep sets, that's not gonna be conducive to building muscle mass and doing like heavy singles as well. But like, within reason, there isn't, I don't think there's, I mean, I guess you the, could say eight to 12 reps maybe, yeah, but like. Yeah, but it's, it's more than that. Isn't it? I think it can vary from anywhere from like six, Plus, it can go all the way up to 20. Yeah, and, and even then, I think if you just stick to the same references all the time, that's not gonna be beneficial yeah. either. I think it's good. I think, I'm a big believer in like a hybrid setup. So doing elements of like strength training where you're doing doubles and triples and combining that with like hypertrophy as well. I think that's important. If you mm. just do the same rep ranges and A, you're not getting that, you're not varying things, but also it's just boring. You know? if you just I feel like your lower body can tolerate higher rep ranges as well. I think they do yeah. respond more from higher rep ranges. I think it's more. Yeah. Slow twitch vibes there. Yeah. Okay, that was a bad that was a bad answer. We didn't really give a direct answer, but there isn't one, right? There's not one. Just accept it. Yeah. You idiot. Vary it. Vary it. Don't keep doing three sets of yeah. ten. There you go. Exactly. Um. Whoa. I've skipped ahead here. Um. Blah, 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 Moraz eight supreme. Hey Matt. Hey Moraz. Uh, do you think that it's possible to become huge without using any protein shakes, creatine, etc.? Of course it is. Is yeah. it though? Yeah, I think the most important thing, if you, if you want to get huge, you need to be in a calorie surplus, which means yeah, you need yeah, to be yeah. consuming more calories than yeah. you're burning off. Obviously, you need to do that over a long period of time. You need to make sure you're consuming enough protein. So I would probably recommend, I probably answered one of the questions here, but around 2.2 grams per total kilogram of body weight. That's very important. A protein. That, yeah. There's a whole load of things, a load of boxes you need to tick off, but yeah. I think having protein shakes is, it's convenient for people who struggle to hit their macro target in terms of protein and you know if for whatever reason they can't get a hold of any decent food then bang just have a protein yeah. shake and be sweet yeah and creatine as well it has been proven to actually help with improving yeah. strength gains recovery and so on it's one of the few supplements that's like you know across the board is accepted that it's effective you know it works and mm -hmm. it's very cheap like you can get a, you can get creatine for like a few months for about 10 pounds so you'd almost be silly not to take it you know mm -hmm. yeah next question okay. do you need to do cardio to lose body fat no, I mean it, it goes with that. I'd say this is similar to the last answer. You don't need you don't need it. Like it makes it easier. Mm. Ultimately, like you know, to lose body fat, you need to be in a calorie deficit. And obviously, the more cardio you're doing, the more calories you're burning, the easier it is to be in a calorie deficit. But the mistakes I've always made is when I've been like, right, I'm going to cut. I want to get shredded. I will automatically start consuming fewer calories than usual. But then I try and do cardio on top of that as yeah. well. So I put myself in such an aggressive deficit. Yeah. That yeah, I lose body fat pretty quickly, but I also lose a lot of size yeah. as well. And then you get stuck because like yeah. if you if you drop your calories by like a thousand calories, you'll lose loads of weight. But after two months, like where do you your go from? Because you're already low. Yeah, yeah. And then you're like a so I think it should, skeletal. it should be used as a last minute tool. Yeah. Once you've kind of exhausted all your other approaches. Yeah, yeah. And it's good like it's good to do like just from a health perspective, but you don't you don't need to do it, you know. Mm. Yeah. Um, okay. Isaac, Isaac, Isaac Clark, 19. Have either of you ever been seriously offered slash tempted to take steroids? Not Definitely not being offered it. Have Never, I, no one's ever like... No one's come up to me like, hey, do you want some steads? If anything, more people have asked me for it or asked me for oh, really? steroids, yeah. Um, I've been tempted, I've never taken it before. I've been, I guess, slightly tempted to just to see what the results would be, but yeah. I yeah. think it would just look it would look freakish. Yeah, it would like be monstrous. It would be quite funny as well, wouldn't it? 
Like yeah. I'm, I was saying to Mike earlier that I'm getting, not so much now, but up until recently, I was getting absolutely hammered with steroid accusations. And part of me, like I would never take them, but part of me is tempted just to be like, Do you know what? This is what I'd look like if I took steroids and just take them for a year and just get ridiculously big. Yeah, I think one of the biggest things as well, like if if you've taken them, it's going to take your physique to a whole new level that you would not be able to achieve naturally. And once you do yeah, eventually yeah, come yeah. off them, yeah, yeah. then yeah. you're going to be almost like a shadow of your former physique. Yeah. And then yeah. you're always going to be comparing yourself to how yeah. big you were. And you're going to be depressed and start eating like Doritos all the time and go to like Weight Watchers Club and then lose all your friends and just yeah. go and live in a cave. I think if, if, you, if, if, I, if I had to compete at like the very top level, there's no way I could do that naturally. Yeah. You would have to alter yeah, 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 yeah. And like, it's not, you know, like, I don't have a problem with someone that takes steroids. The only the issue you'd have is like someone that takes them and then says they don't take them. You know, like, there's no, I don't think it's an issue. I think if you want to do it, like, go for it. And in some respects, it's kind of cool because it's interesting to see, like, how big you can get, you know. But yeah, I've, no, I've never been offered them. I've been, like, in the gym and I've heard conversations mm. taking place, you know, talking about steroids and their availability. But yeah, I haven't been offered them. Um, and yeah, like I said, I've, in terms of being tempted, not seriously, like I've never thought, you know what, I'm going to do it, but a, cu a couple of times I've been annoyed, like I said, at the accusations, and part of me has thought, I'll just take them just, just for a laugh, just to see like how ridiculously big I can get, and then be like, this is actually what I look like if I was on steroids. You friggin' weasel. <laughs> Good question. Um, Next question! <laughs> have you ever considered going vegan? <laughs> I am vegan. I've been vegan for seven years. <laughs> I'm... I've got a new, I've got a spin on veganism, right? What I do, I do all of the things that vegans do, but then I just eat meat and like dairy as well. So it's like, I've <laughs> taken I've taken the best elements of being a vegan, eating carrots and stuff, and I've fused in other good stuff like meat. Everyone's a winner, do you know what I mean? Why do you not do that? <laughs> so basically you've just been adding some vegetables to some of your meals. Yeah, yeah. I've done a day, I was vegan for, I did like a day of eating as a vegan. It's a freaking ball ache. Have you like, done it? Uh, for one day, yeah. Dave is a vegan. If you're a vegan, fair play, because it's friggin' hard. Like, this is I went vegan... shopping, there's like nothing. Everything's got stuff in it. If I had to do it, I'd be tempted to do it for a week, just to see, first of all, how I would do it, because I have no idea how I, how, first of all, how I'm going to get like 200 grams of protein in. Yeah. Friggin without nuts. avocado, like 70 avocados, yeah. or whatever. And then, then protein is that fat. To hit, I suppose you could hit the calories, that'd be alright, because you just have low calorie dense yeah. foods, but it's the protein thing, which is the hardest thing. Yeah. And it would, I'd be tempted to see how I feel after a week. Like if I did feel amazing, like on top of the world on cloud nine, then I'd be like, do you know what? This could be yeah. for me. I think it's probably, ultimately it's probably healthier. Like I reckon you're, I reckon like the average vegan is going to live longer than the average meat eater because it's like, hey, excuse me, we're trying to film it. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, I feel like it's probably healthier, but it's just hassle. I, I mean, I reckon I could be a vegetarian. I I'm not that fussed about meat. I reckon mm -hmm. I could be a vegetarian for a period of time and I'll be okay, you know, but vegan is just the next level and it's like things like this, dairy. This is the thing as well. Dairy, like, you know. You go out with your friends to a restaurant. Yeah, exactly. And you're you're going to you're gonna be that guy. Yeah. You'd have to, oh, you sorry, have to guys, just befriend vegans. I can't vegans. really eat there. Can we go to yeah. this restaurant? Or you go to the restaurant like, yeah. sorry, I've got any vegan options. And they're like, no. And you're like, oh, yeah. salad, please. And like other countries. You try and order, try, if you go to elevate, like parts of France, try to order a, a, a meal and inquire as to whether it's vegan. They're going to literally spit in your face. So. Yeah. Not gonna work, is it? Okay, next question. Uh, oh, oh, truck. Oh, oh. Best slash optimal slash good doesn't make sense. Training program for a beginner to get stronger in the squat, bench, and deadlift. Um, what, do, what, what is it to get better? To get so basically, basically, what is a good beginner program to get better at the big? Uh, big w. Mike Thurston. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There, yeah. There you go. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, I don't think there's what like I mean Wendell is quite good for a beginner like any any program that puts you on like you know a frequency of what if, if you're new to those lifts doing those lifts once a week is fine like separate them out just have some kind of progressive overload like you don't I need would a probably program. if you want to focus on those lifts do them quite frequently so that you get very good at performing those lifts yeah but not initially if you do that initially no but you you wouldn't have to be going to failure yeah but I still think it's still volume you're still accumulating volume then you're going to get stuck. Like squats, goes back to what we're saying. Squats, deadlifts, and press. And bench, bench, squat, deadlift. Like powerlifting. If, if, you, if you what the mistake some people make is they get super enthusiastic and they jump in, they do like three times a week frequency for all of those lifts, yeah. and they get mega strong after three months. But then, how can you progress that? If you go, you know, you got friggin' four times, five times a week. It's all about making progress on the least amount of volume possible. Same as weight loss or weight gain. You know, if you want to gain weight, you want to be gaining weight on the fewest amount of calories because that allows you to keep progressing. Yeah, yeah. Otherwise, you get stuck. 
that there's no magic program like the most important thing is just tracking your training volume and making sure you're progressively overloading your training obviously make sure your techniques right before you go heavy but yeah just track stuff and progress it and that's it uh, and don't go to the gym naked because you get thrown out and probably arrested for <laughs> the how do you get rid of lower back fat and lower abdominal fat I think this is a you very do common sit ups loads of sit ups and loads of like um, bent over and then you just put loads of ice cubes around yeah. your waist and, and one of those toning like, <laughs> yeah, that would work for me actually <laughs> no stop uh, messing around Mike with that, it's just it's one of those things you can't choose where you lose body fat from. Yeah. It's going to come off in a set order for most yeah. males in particular. You know, this is it's going to be the last area where body fat comes from. But I, what I've noticed a lot of people do is they'll go through some sort of you know cutting regime. They see a bit of progress. You know, they lose fat off their extremities, such as their you know arms, legs, upper torso, yeah. and then they kind of just they're frustrated that they don't have a six pack, so they kind of just like give up. And it's like yeah. no, well you have to you have to keep yeah. going keep at it and yeah. then you'll slowly start to see it yeah. but I think as well like when it comes to to actually having sort of visible abs you you do I would recommend training abs specifically you know it's like any other muscle group if you want something to grow you have to train it yeah so if yeah, you and to, if, and even if though it's really, a small muscle group if you do make it relatively yeah, bigger it's more visible they're gonna pop yeah. out like even when I get pretty high body fat percentage yeah. you can still see my abs yeah, so yeah, yeah. like yeah. chunky and yeah blocky. like the bigger a muscle is the more visible it's going to be at a higher relative level of body fat so it would make it easier but you know, like Mike said you can't spot target fat loss so if you've got loads of fat in your blow back that's hereditary blame your stupid parents yeah, and then just get to a, just get to a really low body fat percentage and then it'll go eventually but to be honest blow back fat is a good that's like the best place to put it it yeah. even looks at your low back like it's way better than putting it on your abs like that's pretty good I'd say yeah the worst place would be like your forehead <laughs> imagine that because they're really like jab of the heart really fat just forehead. like hanging over your eyebrows yeah that'd be so inconvenient <laughs> Um, that's a long question, ignoring that. Carlos underscore Jackson, are you a fan of supersets? Because from what I've heard, they just tie you out and are only good later in the workout. Ooh, ooh. that's a good question actually. I actually did a video on this. I think it really depends upon the experience of the trainer. Like if you if you just start get, getting into like a training regime, there's no need to start, you know, overcomplicating it and jumping from one exercise to the next. Um, so start off with the basics and then just focus on making that best, that the exercise you're doing the best set could possibly be. And then once you get better and better, then you start to incorporate it. But I think yeah. doing opposing muscle groups, so like say for example, doing a a push superset with a pull, is probably more advantageous than doing like a, yeah. a push yeah. superset with a push, because once you fatigue that muscle, going into another exercise and just trying to like just, yeah, just yeah. rinse it, yeah. your form's gonna be crap, yeah. particularly with chest. Yeah, like I if think you've exhausted your chest. You go into another chest focused it's super set. It's like, yeah. oh yeah, nice one. It's all yeah, yeah. out. I think I think it has its place. Like yeah, if you're if you're in a rush, for example, you can get more volume in. Oh my God, that's the timer. We've started, so we're going to finish this question. You can get more volume in, like in that amount of time, because obviously you have shorter recovery. But then the 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 cons of that are that the quantity is going to be severely diminished. Like if you do three sets with you know minimal recovery, by the third set, the quality of your reps is going to be appalling. So like. You can't lift as much weight, so you're getting that less overall work. You can't uh, engage the muscles as much because they're fatigued, and you're like an absolute gimp. Yeah. So I think at times I definitely wouldn't do it if you're if you're focusing on trying to get stronger as well. Like yeah, yeah, strength, strength is all about quality, so you need the recovery. Like maybe yeah, like I said, maybe towards the end of the workout to get a few, you know, a bit more volume in. But definitely for your quality stuff, like the first big compounds, they need to have a reasonable amount of recovery. Otherwise, the quantity's gonna be low, the weight's gonna be low, and then ultimately you're wasting your time. Agree. Boom! Oh. If that went over the back, I would absolutely be upset. <laughs> what um, a dangerous so, man. That was. That's the kind of guy I am, you know, live on the edge. Um, that, my friends, is the end of that Q&A. Part um, one. Now, part two is going to be on Mike's channel. So like I said, the link to his channel will be in the description. Go and click on that link. And assuming Mike hasn't let me down, he's uploaded this video at the same time as this one. If it hasn't, you're gonna, everyone's going to be furious. <laughs> go and click on that link to his channel and then you can go and watch part two of the Q&A. Um, I'm going to be way funnier in that one, so it's worth your while watching it. Um, anything to add? No, just go and watch it. That sounded a bit direct. I was going to say something else and then uh, decided not to. It's a family channel, Mike. <laughs> it's a family channel. But for now, um, that's it. It's done. I hope you enjoyed it, guys. If you did enjoy it, please give it a thumbs up and I'll see you tomorrow. Sick!